So we're back with Tom Schumacher. We're going to talk about uh, your work now here at Disney Theatrical. We're in the we're in the headquarters here. Very briefly, can you just give a little history about about yeah. the building and the office? Well, the office yeah, where we are right now is um, in the rooftop theater above the New Amsterdam. The New Amsterdam Theater was built in 1903, one of the very first Broadway theaters built with electric lights. Mm. Most of them had gas lights. Um, this most famously was the home of the Ziegfeld Follies, and what we are now is the theater on top of that theater. So here's the big theater, and there's a little rooftop theater up here where there was a, a nighttime supper club. Okay. And so right behind me is actually, we're on the balcony level, and the, the proscenium is behind us there. So 1997 comes around, and you produce The Lion King on Broadway. You go on to win six Tony Awards, many incarnations around the world. With, with Lion King cu coming so early in your career at Disney Theatrical, do you feel like you got spoiled? Well, uh, because I'd grown up doing theater and I'd been working professionally in the theater, um, uh, it, it's not like it was the first thing I had done. It was my first Broadway show. Mm -hmm. So to say one is spoiled by producing something, the reality is I wasn't spoiled by that. I was spoiled by I got the greatest material to mm -hmm. work with created by these extraordinarily talented, gifted, visionary people. Do you feel like having executive produce the animated film that the Broadway stage musical is, is, is based on really helped you in the, in the development and ultimately helped for the, for the quality and the success? But the fact that I've been at it from the beginning gives me, if you will, to quote my dear friend Richard Eyre who directed Mary Poppins, a certain moral authority over the material where I felt very comfortable in the early days of developing this to say, no, we won't do that, or yes, People will be surprised that we went in that direction, but it's okay to do that. Newsies is, is unique in the fact that it was not something that was initially on your radar. It was something that it was ultimately prompted by, by audience. And so how has that experience been different for you? We knew that the audience wanted Newsies to be performed um, because if you went to YouTube, if you went anywhere, Facebook sites, people were endlessly performing numbers from the film Newsies. And we began developing it for that audience, thinking we'll develop Newsies and then we'll make it available to every high school in America and every college to go perform. That snowballed as we began to develop it and the team was built, including the original composer, Alan Menken, working with the original lyricist, Jack Feldman, but we added Harvey Firestein to the mix. And Harvey shaped the material in a highly theatrical way that when we did a little bit of a test production of it, um, the audience responded bigger than we anticipated and it led to a transfer of that to to Broadway. Sometimes you set out on a path and you know exactly where it's going. Mm. Sometimes you set out on a path thinking it's taking you one place and you discover something else. And the trick in all of this is being able to figure out when you're on the path which path you're on. And having enough faith to keep walking even though you're not sure but to know you're on a path to something. What would you say to the viewers who have dreams and aspirations of, of being an artist, whether it be in the theater or otherwise? A, a, a woman who was very formative to me when I was uh, 15 years old and I had started to work, um, to volunteer at a, at a youth theater company. And every night she would drive me home and a bunch of other kids, she would just drop us off at our houses because we were working so late. And I remember saying to her, I said, Marion, how can I ever pay you back? You, every night you drive me home, I, I, I can't. And she goes, oh, you don't pay me back. She says, one day you'll have a car mm -hmm. and then you'll drive someone else home. My life has been filled with remarkably generous people who helped me get where I am today and helped others get there. Pay it forward, be generous to the next generation, create opportunity for them. When you create opportunity for others, you create opportunity for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you set your sights to just watch out after yourself, for the most part, in my experience, you will fail. If you set out to be generous to others, help them along the way, encourage them, be supportive of them, and cheer their success, success will flow to you. The only reason I get to do this or be part of it, which is the most important thing in the world to me, is because people have been generous with me. So the, by extension, the only thing one can actually do is be generous to others.